Welcome, welcome, welcome in everyone. Welcome to Care Concierge with Care Patrol, where education is the heart of everything that we do. We appreciate you joining us on this Friday. It's already the end of March, if y'all can believe it. And we hope you'll join us on Monday. We have a member of the UAB Neurology Department who will be speaking with us about Huntington, Huntington's excuse me, disease. Some of you may know that uh, UAB and USA in Mobile are both centers for excellence uh, for Huntington's. Uh, and we'll be learning some of the newest information about that disease from one of their physicians. So that will be most interesting, and I hope you'll join us on Monday for that. And that will conclude our March calendar. We'll pick back up in April. We already have on board Latanya Washington, uh, who will resume or conclude rather her 30-day challenge, which some of us may have started. Uh, I started on April 20th, or excuse me, March 20th. So she'll on April 20th, I think it's a Friday, uh, we'll wrap that up and, and compare notes. Uh, and we also have Dr. Nicole Brown, uh, who will be joining us again, uh, talking about uh, a topic of her choice, uh, and it's always good. So we look forward to that on uh, uh, in April. Um, we are Care Patrol. Some of you may know us, some of you may not. Uh, we're an aging care navigation firm, and what that means is we meet people where they are, uh, they may be in crisis, they may be in planning stages, uh, they may have passed the window, but we help them investigate community placement as well as providing them with resources that uh, can help them with financial or legal or other topics. Uh, and then if our clients end up using a home care agency that we referred or moving into a community that we referred and toured with them, uh, then we will be paid a commission, kind of like a realtor would be paid that's who we are. That's what we do. And education is the heart of everything we do. And that's why we do these CEUs with you. Um, today's topic, like the majority of our topics, was chosen by a former uh, participant at one of our uh, care concierge CEUs. Uh, and all of our topic, or most of our topics rather, are we ask you in the evaluation uh, at the conclusion of today, uh, for your ideas. We want to try and, and, and make sure that we're addressing things that are important, that are current, that have impact for you. Um, we do have an evaluation process that is password protected, um, and you must, uh, you must do the evaluation to get credit for this hour. It's a 1.0 hour for both social work and nurses. And we're accredited by both Alabama boards of social work and nursing. And we post nursing hours for you. Alabama Board of Social Work prefers that you post your own. Uh, I'm gonna read to you momentarily the uh, evaluation link. Again, it's password protected. And by doing this password protection, we can show the Board of Social Work that you social workers who are here today are participating in a live or face-to-face -face training. Um, and for nurses, of course, that's a non-issue. Uh, but uh, we do thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to read now the evaluation link. I know many people participate by phone or driving or otherwise aren't in front of a screen. Uh, and so that link is for today, https colon forward slash forward slash www dot survey monkey.com forward slash lowercase r forward slash all uppercase letters x q h s is in sam two n as in nancy v as in victory and so it's all the same until you, if, if you're with us and you've been with us, the last digits are all caps 
and they are X, Q, H, S is in Sam, 2, N is in Nancy, V is in victory. That's today's evaluation link. We do encourage discussion. We want to hear your voice. I am a firm believer that when you add your voice to others, everyone is enriched by it. I know that those who are on this call will be enriched if you participate and share your own experience about arthritis, symptoms, treatments, and prevention, our topic today. So our objectives are threefold. Uh, one, we're going to define and list at least three types of arthritis. Excuse me, I had dementia on the brain or maybe in the brain. Um, we're going to list the differences between the various types of arthritis. And we're going to discuss some, some coping mechanisms or ways to live with arthritis. So those are our objectives today. And we do encourage discussion. How many people, to kick things off, how many people do y'all think have arthritis in the U.S.? How many people do y'all think have arthritis in the U.S.? As you think about that, I'll move along, but I wonder how many people do you think have arthritis in the U.S., keeping in mind that our population is about 350 million, give or take. Well, we know it's too many to count, as Lacey Vinson says, and it affects everyone. It affects men, arthritis does, and arthritis affects women more than men, and arthritis affects children, really, of any age. Ms. Alexander says it's a quarter of the population. That's a pretty good guess. Uh, it is the most common cause of disability in the US. It's about 50 million adults. 50 million adults. So that's really about one seventh, which seven into one is one is three is about 14 and a half percent, 15% of the US. Uh, and far too many children, 300,000, have some form or some form, excuse me, of arthritis. And arthritis can be uh, something that comes on later in life and then lasts several years, or it can be something that comes on early in life and is lifelong, or it can be something that comes on in childhood and is outgrown. It's most common, and I think we would all know this, it's most common in the feet and the hands and the hips and the knees and the lower back, the joints. And we do see that depression is more prevalent among those who have depression, or excuse me, have arthritis. And we have seen some effect in treating the depression and thus ameliorating in some degree the pain. And so that's an encouraging to me development. And here's a sobering topic. There are about 50 of us or 55, 60 on this call. One in nine of us will develop arthritis as they age. So listen, to spare y'all being a statistic, I'll go ahead and raise my hand and say that I'm one of those nine. I have arthritis. Uh, for reasons that we'll discover later. Um, and you may have arthritis too. It's swelling and it's tenderness and it's ache in one or more joints. The main symptoms are pain and stiffness. And this typically worsens with age. The most common types of arthritis are osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis causes the cartilage between our bones and our joints to break down. Rheumatoid arthritis is our own immune system attacking those joints, beginning with the lining of them. Then there is a predominantly male form of arthritis that's uh, lesser to uh, less common, which is gout, which is a buildup of uric acid in the body. 
Uh, and then there are those people that get uh, sort of a, a short term, if you will, arthritis because they have some infection or underlying disease that causes the symptoms of arthritis to appear, but arthritis does not take hold and remain in their body for more than about six months or so. What do y'all think are the three of the most common types of arthritis? Now, this is an easy question because I've already given you rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. So what then maybe are some more common types and we've given you gout and we've given you uh, reactive, which is when someone has a, a, an incident or uh, injury and it, they, or disease process that brings about a short-term uh, arthritic uh, you know, set of symptoms. So osteoprenia, that's a good one, Ms. Carpenter. I can always count on you for something that stumps me. Um, great osteoarthritis, Mr. Jones. Thank you, sir. Um, the one I'll talk about is neither of those, but those are great guesses. So psoriatic arthritis, yes, ma'am. I, I, that is a, a very common arthritis. In fact, there are over a hundred different types of arthritis. Can you believe that? The most common by far is osteoarthritis, which is what we consider, I think most of us, normal wear and tear on aging bones. Um, and just repeated stress causes breakdown of those joints. There's uh, ankylosing spondylitis, which is arthritis of the spine or lower back or hip joint. Juvenile arthritis, which is uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Again, the immune system attacks the tissue around joints and it typically affects children 16 or younger. Gout, we've discussed, psoriatic arthritis, uh, which is an inflammation that develops in people who have psoriasis, which is autoimmune, as is arthritis. Uh, and then there's rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and uh, that is, again, a disease process where the immune system attacks the synovial fluid and the linings of the joints. Osteoarthritis, the most common, and I'm sure the most well-known among us, is also known as degenerative joint disease or DJD. We will not use that term, but it is also known as that term. Uh, and there are a number of contributing factors that lead to osteoarthritis. Um, and osteoarthritis simply defined as inflammation and injury to the joint. And this inflammation and injury can cause changes in the bone or additions of bone, deterioration of the tendons and ligaments, breakdown of the cartilage, and ultimately all leading to deformity in the joint. About 80% of people who are 55 and older have evidence of osteoarthritis upon x-ray. I mean, that's a high number, uh, I think. I, again, I'm included in it. About 60% of those folks uh, actually experienced the symptoms of arthritis. About 300 million people worldwide um, are symptomatic. And in the US, there are about 30, over 32.5 million, which is a little higher number than we quoted earlier. But I just got that one from uh, either the CDC or the Arthritis Foundation. Uh, it, it's interesting to me really postmenopausal women see an increased incidence of knee osteoarthritis. Ms. Sigger said, RA, well, and this is a question impromptu. Why do y'all think, because this is, this is interesting to me, why would y'all think that postmenopausal women would have an increased incident, incidence of knee osteoarthritis? Bone loss, Ms. Sigger says. 
is that from, I guess my question would be, would that be from the weight of child, you know, children and, 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 and pregnancy or maybe just the weight of the sh world on your shoulders for your entire life? I don't know. The body is so weight gain. That could be true, Mr. Jones. That's true. The CDC's arthritis program recommends these steps to manage it. And really starting with one, learn how to manage it. Um, they recommend to join self-help and support groups of which there are many, which one could you know, access through the local uh, arthritis foundation. Um, the other that I find interesting is to be active for 150 minutes at minimum per week, which is, you know, over seven days. What is that? About 20 minutes a day. I mean, that seems like something that could be a, a reachable goal for someone like me with arthritis. Um, and it also, as we all know, we talked about this, I think with, with every disease state that we discuss, you know, sleep, uh, exercise, proper diet, these are the things that keep you healthy. It's important if you have arthritis to be very active in speaking with your uh, healthcare provider and educating yourself so as to be able to ask questions when you go in to that. Losing weight to Mr. Jones's point. Oh, Mrs. Jones, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, forgive me. It won't happen again. Uh, losing weight, uh, even 5% of weight loss uh, provides noticeable, notable improvement in pain in the knee and hip joints. Um, and it also can slow progression of osteoarthritis. So thus merely losing weight, which one would do if they walk 20 minutes per day. And then the I'm sorry. I have a Shorty named Lil Ann, and Lil Ann protects this house. And uh, someone came to the house, so I apologize. Uh, in terms of protecting your joints, it would be making the choice that I've made, which is to no longer run. Um, those days are gone, and walk. Uh, and if I were a good swimmer, I would swim. That would be the best uh, exercise. Um, So I'll ask you, I'll ask you uh, another question once you refine it and nice to answer. Here's another one. How does rheumatoid arthritis differ from osteoarthritis? And I've given you some clues already. How does rheumatoid arthritis differ from osteoarthritis? Well, Rheumatoid arthritis is a long-term and chronic disease of the autoimmune variety. The inflammation of the joints in rheumatoid arthritis can be so severe that it affects other joints in the body, which seek to compensate, and they affect the way the body looks and functions. People who have rheumatoid arthritis, unlike people with osteoarthritis, may develop rheumatoid nodules anywhere in the body, and it often occurs on the soles of the feet. Rheumatoid arthritis typically affects people at a younger age, or they're diagnosed at a younger <laughs> age, in the ages of 30 to 50 on average, but it can happen later in life, uh, as it did with my sister-in-law. Um, and it happens more in women than in men. Uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis is 16 or younger. And again, many times uh, this is, is something that the, the children grow out of, so to speak. Uh, and it uh, causes inflammation and stiffness, but its symptoms tend to come in sort of six week intervals. Uh, whereas adult RA lasts your rest of your life. Again, rheumatoid arthritis is when the body's own immune system attacks the lining of the joints, the synovial membrane, which becomes inflamed and swollen, 
and can eventually enter into a disease process in which the cartilage and bone within the joint are destroyed. Early on, the manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis that may go unnoticed would be the smaller joints in the hands, feet, fingers, and toes. This was true of my sister-in-law who sent one time, um, I remember her sending, and she and my wife speak daily, but some years ago, she sent her a photo of her wonky toe. She woke up and her toe was, you know, like in a, in a C, backwards C shape. She thought, what happened to my toe? Well, we, she didn't know, so I didn't know, of course, that was the first marker of rheumatoid arthritis that she would later learn she had when other joints began being affected and when she became so fatigued that there were days upon days that she could not get out of bed. And then as these symptoms worsen and grow, the stiffness moves into bigger joints like the wrist and knees, ankles, elbows, hips, shoulders. What's interesting in rheumatoid arthritis is that if you develop arthritis in your left shoulder, you're likely to also develop it in your right shoulder if you have rheumatoid arthritis because the arthritis tends to mirror itself on the, both sides of the hemisphere of the body. And Unlike osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis can affect non-joints, specifically the lungs, uh, the heart, the skin, if you have psoriatic, uh, nerves, muscles, blood vessels, and even kidneys. Um, you see many times that people that have rheumatoid arthritis will develop uh, uh, pulmonary, uh, uh, oh goodness, my mother-in-law passed away from it. Uh, starts with an F, y'all. Pulmonary, finish the sentence for me. Anyway, because the bones in the chest and back begin to fuse uh, with rheumatoid arthritis with some folks, and thus breathing becomes more difficult. Miss Sigger says, my best friend has RA and was diagnosed as about 33 to 34. It took them a while to figure out what was wrong with her she has to have knee replacement surgery this June. She is 42 now. That seems to have progressed pretty quickly to be having knee surgery eight years after diagnosis. Uh, I pray for her recovery. Fibrosis, thank you, Miss Young. Thank you. Thank you. Pulmonary fibrosis. I am having a senior moment. Uh, and they're having happening more often, it seems. So the symptoms with rheumatoid arthritis will be, again, you know, in, in small and grow. Uh, and they'll all vary, but they all involve pain, stiffness, swelling, decreased movement and mobility, pain that worsens with movement. Many people will develop bumps over the joints of the small joints in the fingers and toes. Um, many people with RA will over time have difficulty doing uh, you know, activities of daily living like cooking or feeding themselves or tying their shoes and trouble grasping or pinching. Uh, and as I described about my sister-in-law, just a, a fatigue that uh, is unlike any other fatigue. And I know my sister-in-law, she has a terrific work ethic and is up and at them. Uh, and so for her to be down, you know, as she was and still is from time to time uh, is, is no small thing. The issue with all of these, including fever, which some people get, and she did as well. The issue is these can seem like any number of things. You could think you have the flu or you over-exercised or over-stimulated yourself. It could be uh, anything. And so it's sort of hard to catch. Uh, and there's no cure for rheumatoid arthritis. So again, to manage it, one would want to work very closely with and diligently with one's health care provider. And this would include both medicines over the counter and non-traditional herbal or other 
uh, physical therapy and uh, to be successful for most will require lifestyle changes. What the uh, CDC recommends is uh, activity and rest. And so periods of activity followed by periods of rest in order to allow the joints sort of de-stress. Uh, they recommend assistive devices like canes and walkers to steady one's balance. Um, they recommend adaptive equipment like those little grabber things we see to pick up the remote that fell once again onto the floor. Uh, and then working with the healthcare provider again to say, you know, I want to try fish oil. How will that affect uh, my, you know, other medications? Uh, and also, you know, again and again and again, and we see this with other diseases, find support. You're not alone. You're not the only person. Although it may feel like that, there are others and you'll be enriched by being in their company. Does anybody know? Here's a question for the chat room or discussion. Does anyone know much or have anyone that's uh, uh, close or that you know even? who has ankylosing spondylitis. Anyone have any familiarity with ankylosing spondylitis? Well, we'll discuss it. It is a type of arthritis, one of the big three or four that causes inflammation in certain parts of the spine, typically in the lower spine, uh, which connects to the, the sacroiliac. Um, ankylosing, which is a, a word that it's hard for me to remember, means stiff or rigid. And spondyl, which I assume is Latin, means spine. And it really sort of more refers to the ankylosing, stiff or rigid inflammation. The reason I know this uh, word or two words and, and still never quite get them right is that my own child has ankylosing spondylitis. And so I've watched her progression with this disease and watched the toll it's taken on her. And as I told her that I was doing this presentation today, uh, she's home for spring break from college. She's a freshman. Um, I said, what should I include in this presentation? And she said to me, you should say something about how hard it is to live with arthritis. How if you have pain in this joint, it affects that joint. How there are times when you feel like you can't eat or you can't sleep, or the pain moves. Um, she said it's constantly on alert, on a vigil in a sense of monitoring oneself for ache. And it's exhausting. She takes Humira once every two weeks. She was diagnosed in the fifth grade and I gave her her shots for the first year. And ever since, she's done it herself. But it took a toll on her life as it would on someone's life who develops RA or someone who's aging and develops osteoarthritis. Um, it's taken a toll on her. She never got to participate really in team sports or dance or cheerleading because she couldn't physically do it. Um, you know, she missed out on a lot of team building and relationship building because she missed school um, or because she had special accommodations and so was separated from other children. And while all that's meant to be uh, helpful um, to the child, you know, children like to be, um, among their peers and not separated. And I think the most damage is just the emotional toil and the depression that it wreaks on you 
to think on a daily basis that there's something damaged in you or about you and to have to somehow make excuses for yourself, it seems, every day. These are the things my daughter told me about living with arthritis. Her ankylosing spondylitis, like everyone else's, is unknown origin. There's some thought that genetics play a role, and that does make sense because, again, her aunt has RA, and her aunt, another aunt, has an autoimmune disease that uh, attacks uh, people of Scandinavian descent, uh, which I'm sure has a long and hard to pronounce name that I don't know. Uh, and then her grandmother died of pulmonary fibrosis. And again, thank you, Ms. Young, for the word. Um, and so, yes, you can see there's some genetic uh, role. The other thing is that you know, we haven't tested her genetically, but if we did, we might find that she had gene HLA-B27, which is found in most white Americans who have ankylosing spondylosis, and in about half of black Americans who have the disease. Less than 5% of the people who have the gene actually develop the disease. It's more common among ages 17 to 35 to be diagnosed. My daughter was 10 or 11. Uh, it affects more young men than women, it tends to run in families, it affects about 1% of the U.S., so about 3.5 million people among us. And again, it can lead to pulmonary fibrosis because of the hardening of the spine and of the bones of the chest. Um, And with it, the symptoms of ankylosing spondylitis tend to come and go. And it can be back pain, which usually increases and is more severe at night, stiffness in the morning. Uh, some people of, of long standing develop a stooped posture because the back pain is so unending that the stooped posture seems to alleviate it. And it becomes then their habit, I suppose. Um, it does contribute to appetite loss and obviously then to weight loss. It has periods of fatigue, fevers, anemia, joint pain is fairly common. Um, and then there are damage to the organs like RA. And in particular, my daughter's eyesight is um, not near, you know, it's, 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 she she needs a new prescription. Let me put it that way. She needs new prescriptions off script. That's what I'm trying to say in a labored way. Uh, and she does get rashes on her face and on her chest. Um, and she does not, thankfully, have any ulcerative colitis, although that is often the case for people who have ankylosing spondylitis. So the first line treatment for it would be the same as the first line treatment for the other types of arthritis, which would be uh, NSAIDs uh, to relieve pain and stiffness. Although I would caution that you would not want to really probably use this with someone over 62, as studies link the use of NSAIDs to developing dementia. So you might want to use other over-the-counter pain relief. Physical therapy and staying mobile is key to arresting the progression of any arthritis. Assistive devices are useful for many who have advanced in their disease state. Uh, and if then these are not sufficient, uh, corticosteroids will be administered with lower inflammation. Don't uh, you go? Modifying anti rheumatic drugs, which I will call DMARDs, because I like saying it. DMARDs are the immunosuppressants or immunomodulators that slow down the progression and alleviate the symptoms of ankylosing spondylitis and rheumatoid arthritis. 
And these drugs take about three to six months to work. But there are newer types of DMARDs that are biologics that block the tumor necrosis factor alpha immune system cells. These block tumor necrosis factor alpha immune system cells that these biologics block are associated with rheumatoid arthritis and many other autoimmune disorders. And then there are the JAK inhibitors that help uh, inhabit, inhibit, excuse me, the uh, activity of the Janus kinase, and I've mispronounced that, enzymes involved in inflammation. And so to manage ankylosing spondylitis, um, one of the uh, things that we would look at would be the interleukin 17A or IL 17A inhibitors that would ease inflammation and swelling, uh, short-term use of muscle relaxants and pain relievers, surgery as um, I believe it was Ms. Uh, Sigger's uh, friend is, is about to face in which there may be rods inserted into the spine in the case of ankylosing spondylitis or other parts of the body uh, with other types of arthritis uh, or remove thickened or hardened bone. Um, and then there's what we would all need to work on maintaining proper posture versus giving into the pain in the case of ankylosing spondylitis and regular exercise, which keeps the muscles loose. Uh, and again, be very diligent and very much an advocate for oneself <laughs> and talking with healthcare providers and researching questions to ask prior to going to the appointment. What do y'all suppose, and we've already mentioned some, would be some risk factors for arthritis? I know these are simple questions. There are many risk factors. What do y'all think would be some or one risk factor for arthritis? Inactivity, says Ms. Young. Age, family history, says Ms. Lopez. Putting too much weight on the joints improperly. That's correct, Ms. Hoover. Thank you all for participating today. It is a pretty day or sort of a pretty day. I would be probably looking out the window rather than listening to Sean Barnes. So risk factors for arthritis would be family history, which we nailed. Um, and again, this most likely, at least autoimmune disorders run in uh, my family. And my daughter is uh, you know, the recipient of that. Age, um, so osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and gout, the possibility of, of gaining those increases with age. It's interesting, Ms. Carpenter, you said cigarettes because cigarettes do not directly contribute to arthritis, studies show. Uh, and neither, for that matter, does alcohol. However, cigarettes lead to many, many, many other health conditions that in themselves may somehow lead to arthritis. But cigarettes, oddly enough, do not lead to arthritis. Obesity, Ms. Hinton, is true. Um, gender women, like so many things, unfortunately, y'all, are more likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis than we as men, and yet we're more likely to develop gout. Previous joint injury, this would be the case of my arthritis. People who have injured a joint while playing a sport are more likely to develop arthritis in that joint. Um, and that is such is the case with me. Obesity, you know, we've already said that losing just 5% of your weight takes enormous stress off of your joints, particularly your hips and knees. And then childhood trauma. I would wager that a high percentage of 
uh, children that develop juvenile arthritis who are subject to trauma in some way. And I don't necessarily mean uh, sexual trauma or, or you know, physical trauma. It could be divorce. It could be any number of different traumas, adoption trauma. It could be any number of things. But I think that uh, there is evidence to show that 60% uh, of the children who do suffer trauma go on to develop go on to develop an autoimmune disease. And so we've already said here, when you're managing, you know, there are really two most important things to manage. One is that we want to uh, research our disease process uh, and then carry questions with us to our doctor about our disease and any new or interesting treatments or approaches or anything else for their review, um, this is the way to approach any appointment. This is the way I tell my clients when we need to get a plan of care installed or maybe get a conservatorship or guardianship, direct the healthcare provider and what you need and they will deliver. You simply ask, here's what I need from you and they're happy to deliver. And so you just also need, like any other disease, to keep a journal of the, you know, what hurts and when and what you've eaten and what you did. And if there's see if there's any correlation and take that journal with you to see your provider who may have seen other journals or heard other experiences and may see a pattern and what is happening with you that can be fixed in a way. So the common test for any arthritis would be the x-ray. This would show cartilage loss and bone damage and bone spurs. And it can also be used in subsequent follow-ups to track the progression of the disease. If we also see that MRIs can give us greater detailed images of the cartilage, tendons, and ligaments, um, and those are useful. And generally speaking, uh, you'll have an x-ray and some lab work, and if it's more complex, maybe an MRI or a CT scan uh, or an ultrasound uh, if they're looking at your joints. And also, uh, the fluid in the joints is used to guide needle placement with the, not the fluid, the ultrasound is used to guide the needle placement to remove fluid. That's what I'm trying to say. So the common test, obviously physical exam, again, you'd want to take a journal if you had it, or uh, just a, a list of symptoms and an onset of symptoms and the severity of symptoms um, and take that with you to the exam, and they will be looking then for any current swelling or redness. Um, they'll do the uh, ESR blood test to check for markers of inflammation. They'll check for C-reactive protein, which is a blood marker uh, that determines acute inflammation. It's produced in the liver, and the higher the level indicates the higher the level of inflammation. There's the ANA test, uh, which is probably most well known when talking about RA or autoimmune diseases, which measures the antibodies that attack the healthy proteins. And this is a, a great help in diagnosis. And then there's the anti-CCP uh, test that will show whether there is the presence of an antibody that leads to rheumatoid arthritis. What do y'all suppose might be, and again, you're free to uh, unmute or enter in the chat room, what do y'all suppose might be alternative treatments or approaches or diets that would be good in managing arthritis? And some of you may have arthritis, and if you do, and if you're comfortable, would love to have you share your experience, and particularly anything you do that is helpful that might be a resource for others. Ms. Cantrell asked about fish oil. Ms. Hoover says staying away from red meats and dairy. 
those are both good and 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 i would say that those you know i i would have guessed the same before reading reading uh some some research on it um glucosamine supplements thank you miss young you always come in like hard like come in hot miss young with like the, the really good comments miss sigger's modified exercise very good thank you for that modified exercises so acupuncture is one means of relieving pain has anyone on the call ever had acupuncture anyone ever done acupuncture i have i've done acupuncture and you do not feel the needles Ms. Stevens, at 58, I have recently developed arthritis in both index fingers. Neither parent has this, so any recommendations are appreciated. I would go see a rheumatologist, uh, Ms. Stevens, uh, and I would be asking to be checked for RA, I believe, as that uh, arthritis starts in the smaller joints like fingers and toes. Um, I hope that's not the case, but I certainly would want to know um, that it wasn't you know, if I were if I were in your your position. Um, so acupuncture, no one's had acupuncture. Um, you don't feel it. Um, I, you know I, it didn't work for me, uh, but I know many people swear by it. Glucosamine, I know someone mentioned, um, and some studies show that glucosamine doesn't work any better than a placebo. However, both of them relieved pain better than taking nothing at all. Sharon Cantrell, Australian dream cream was recommended by my doctor. I have arthritis in my right arm and left hip. Check with your pharmacy. Australian dream cream for anyone who has arthritis, check with your pharmacy. I'm gonna be checking Ms. Cantrell, I appreciate that. Australian dream cream. Uh, chondroitin, uh, fish oil, uh, but the thing about fish oil, and you have to be very careful is, uh, and you definitely wanna speak with your provider prior to starting taking fish, fish oil, because fish oil can really uh, have a, a, a negative effect on common drugs. Um, yoga and Tai Chi or any movement, uh, the, there was a study done that showed that the most effective means of uh, combating arthritis was in fact movement. Uh, and they, did a study that took a, it was, I think it lasted maybe a year. And they had two different sort of test groups. One that did sort of, you know, weightlifting type, you know, bodybuilding, not bodybuilding, but you know, like gym, like YMCA exercise type stuff. And the others did Tai Chi. Um, and they found that both of them had a market effect on reducing the symptoms and slowing the progression. And in fact, um, it was 24 months after the study that those that did Tai Chi were still having the effects of increased balance and core strength over where they had been prior to initiating the study. So they kept their advances. And so did the people who did regular YMCA type exercise. In fact, they lasted longer than 24 months. So it cannot be uh, underestimated the power of movement and massage. Now you'd wanna be careful with this. You certainly want to tell the masseuse uh, that you had whatever you had uh, and, and point those areas out uh, prior to, you know, just going for a straight up massage. So what is the diet then that y'all think? I, and I don't think anyone answered that, but uh, whole grains, nuts and seeds, brown rice and quinoa 
uh, help lower the CRP protein, which causes inflammation. And the diet that, that uh, the Arthritis Foundation recommends is the anti-inflammatory diet, which many of us know better as the Mediterranean diet. And this is a diet that has meat and fish uh, in it, but also features fresh vegetables that are prepared in ways that uh, enhance, you know, their, uh, not only their flavor, but also our ability to absorb the vitamins within them. Red and purple fruits of any kind, cherries, strawberries, others have an anti-inflammatory effect. Beans are loaded with fiber and phytonutrients that again, lower the C-reactive protein. Fish oil is a powerful anti-inflammatory. Uh, however, again, be careful. And then turmeric, does anyone cook with turmeric? If you make curry, you do cook with turmeric. It's the yellow powder that will never, never, never leave your fingernails um, or the countertop. Um, and really for the most part, doesn't add a lot of flavor, but adds a lot of color. Uh, but it has a lot of, uh, of uh, evidence showing its efficacy in helping with arthritis. And there is a chemical within it called curcumin that may help prevent bone erosion in people with RA. Now, what do we want to avoid? I eat gummies with turmeric. Really? Where do you get those? I love gummies and the turmeric would be good for me. Where is it? Amazon, I bet it's Amazon, of course. I didn't, why did I ask? It's Amazon, of course it is. Uh, so it's not that we can't eat meat. It's that we can't cook meat at a high temperature or fry it. So if we roast it or sear it or grill it at high temperatures, we can increase and advance the AGEs, which are advanced glycation end products, that are found in people who have inflammation that are believed to increase that inflammation. So uh, instead we would want to steam our fish or seafood or simmer our chicken or meat in a sauce or in its own cooking liquid. This is the way that we can eat those foods in a Mediterranean type diet uh, and maintain what we want to eat uh, just change the way we prepare it. Omega-6, <laughs> it does taste better the other way, uh, except some things. So, so I'll, I, you know, I should cook for you. Um, so omega-6 fatty acids, all those sunflower oil and vegetable oils and cottonseed oils and all those packaged cookies and crackers raise the uh, specter of joint inflammation as well as obesity. And of course that's a double-edged sword. Uh, sugar increases inflammation uh, and also uh, anything that has O's in it, fructose, sucrose, these are all sugars derived from things like corn or you know, other beets or something else. Trans fats, I remember many years ago, there was an uproar about partially hydrogenated oils. Uh, these again are usually seen in packaged foods or in fried foods. And so we would avoid those. And of course, we, I hope we're avoiding MSG anyway, just because it gives me a headache uh, and it may do the same to you. And then, you know, interestingly, there's no data that shows that gluten has any effect on rheumatoid arthritis. So here's some myths just to keep you from doing this. Cider vinegar doesn't do anything, at least in studies, hasn't shown any ability to alleviate pain with rheumatoid arthritis. I've never heard of this one, but gin-soaked raisins. And the idea is that there's sulfur dioxide used to make the raisins. Uh, and then the juniper berries that are uh, made to gin, apparently these two berries were linked in some studies with some ability to you know, arrest or benefit people having arthritis symptoms, but there's no data that shows that this gin-soaked raisins does that. There's red wine. 
And it is true that red wine does have resveratrol in it, which has an anti-inflammatory effect. But lest you take this as a gung-ho, let's drink wine, uh, think about it that, you know, again, as we've said in other disease discussions, one glass per woman or two glasses per man per day is, you know, pushing the boundary of healthy. Uh, and then the raw food diet has shown no evidence to have any effect on arthritis. So how can one live well with arthritis? How would y'all suppose? And I'll be giving the password here in just a second. How would y'all suppose that one could live well with arthritis? I'll tell you what my daughter does. She uh, seeks counseling for depression and takes medication. She um, focuses on arenas in which she can participate, like painting and drawing, solitary things. And she's very adept at those. And she doesn't ever let her, if you could call it disability, affect her. She doesn't speak to others about it. Um, in fact, when we went to do 504 plans, some of you may know what those are. Those are special needs plans in, in public school. When we did those, she did not want to be known as someone that had that 504 plan. Um, and she did not uh, want to be someone that participated in the Arthritis Foundation events even though at the time I had an uh, employee and friend, Deanna Wilson, who was very involved in that and wanted her to participate. But she did, for Julie, uh, she just wanted to be herself and do what she could do and make the most of that. And I think she's also done this. She's read and studied and is very adept and very bright at knowing about her disease and her limitations and her challenges and her abilities. And she's very good at speaking with her provider. And she is not as disciplined, nor is her father, at making the life changes, life changes that would be necessary to be successful. Uh, and really it comes down to that with, with any disease, doesn't it? It's on us to make changes and how we approach our lives for moving forward so that we can be successful, healthy, and independent. And this, you know, arthritis is no different. Our CEU code word is the number three and the capital M, followed by a forward slash, and then the word in all lowercase letters, year, Y-E-A-R. So I'm going to post again in the chat room our evaluation link, if I can, if it will let me. Da -da. No, I'm sorry, I'm not able to do that. But I will type in the uh, password uh, for you. It is three uppercase M forward slash and then the word year Y-E-A-R. So the reason that we're doing that uh, password is that uh, 3 million people in the United States will be diagnosed with some form of arthritis this year. 3 million people this year will be diagnosed with arthritis. And I know this was not a deep dive into arthritis, which I do want to do, um, but I hope this was helpful in letting you know a little bit about what those folks experience. I uh, appreciate you being here. Again, please join us Monday uh, when we will have a member of the UAB Neurology Department staff, a doctor, uh, explain to us new thoughts and pearls of wisdom in Hodgkin's disease. Um, thank you, Ms. Cantrell, for the nice note. Uh, again, our, our, our uh, evaluation link, if you're driving, can't see a screen, can't see the chat room, is https 
colon forward slash forward slash www dot survey monkey dot com forward slash lowercase r forward slash all uppercase letters x q h s is in sam two n as in nancy v as in victory and the password is three capital m forward slash lowercase y e a r thank you so much if you have any friends family clients patients who are in the throes of finding care for an aging loved one please remember us let us know their name and number we'll call them we'll take that search off their plate they'll be able to focus on other things hopefully healing and resting themselves uh, and we're free so we're at no charge Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice, nice comments, y'all. Uh, if there are no questions or issues with the uh, password today or the link, then we will end on time, uh, perhaps. I can figure out how to do so. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great week.